basketball fans, welcome to another coach's show. We have, of course, uh, first year coach Matt Fralix here with us, uh, the, the all time leading scorer in Caldwell County history. And we're going to talk about all time leading scorers in a very disappointing situation uh, here in Crittenden County. And, uh, of course, uh, junior Jonah Reddick, uh, newcomer to the Rocket basketball team this year, but making a big splash uh, down around the post area. So uh, we're going to get right to the show. Lots going on. Uh, we're recording this uh, on uh, on Wednesday, or excuse me, Tuesday, and uh, a lot of snow uh, on the ground and in the forecast. So so a lot to talk about uh, today on the show, uh, presented by Whitetail Properties in cooperation with uh, other uh, fine sponsors here in, in uh, Marion Crittenden County, including H&H Home and Hardware, First United Bank, La Delicia Restaurant, Farmers Bank and Trust, Frazier Law Firm, Seaplant Federal Credit Union, YTG Insurance, Rocket Tire, and Bobby Stinnett, Sean Stinnett down at Bobby Stinnett Used Cars. Uh, Coach, uh, first of all, let's get our uh, fans caught up with what's going on this week due to the weather. Uh, supposed to play Trigg County down there. Kate is to, tonight. Uh, that game's off. It's off. It's uh, communicated with the athletic department over at Trigg this morning, and uh, they're out of school today. We're out of school today. The back roads are still in, in pretty bad shape. So the decision was made to go ahead and postpone the game and reschedule it for February 5th. That's on a Monday. Which will be, and it'll still be a, a girl boy doubleheader that night. So we're not losing, you know, anything like that. It's still girl boy doubleheader district night. Yeah. Uh, you know, you and I talked yesterday about uh, right now Trigg County uh, has has only played a couple of games since uh, so, since the holidays and didn't mm-hmm. do a whole lot really over the holidays. Uh, so now might have been a good chance to have got gotten a shot at those guys you know yeah but, uh, you never know yeah you never know of course the thing about i mean they're a small school like we are and it just kind of depends on whoever's on a roll uh you know we played with them in that first matchup for about the first three and a half quarters and then in, we just kind of gave it away there at the end that score didn't indicate at all you know how close that game right. was you know we had to start fouling right and they made their free throws and then we didn't execute down the stretch but uh, i feel like uh when we now that we've got everybody back and hopefully we can get in that groove heading into the district tournament, you know, in February, that you know we can get them. Mm-hmm. And we can. Uh, although we went through the first uh, half of the uh, district round robin without uh, without a win, uh, you were telling me yesterday, you know, there's some scenarios that uh, we can still win the district. Well, or excuse me, not win the district, finish well, second in the district. Well, I mean, it or kind third. of it kind of depends on you know how everything else lays out. It. Um, just depends on who beats who on certain nights. I know that uh, Trigg beat Livingston in the first round, uh, but I believe it's you know if we can get the the Trigg and Livingston game, which we're supposed to be this week, if we can get both of those games, it really puts us in the driver's seat for the two or three spot. Mm-hmm. But obviously, if you lose those games and you give them away, and then you lose to Lyon County in, as well, if we do if we go zero for three again, then we know what what boat we're in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that Lyon County game is just one, you know, hope dies hard, but uh, you can almost scratch that one off of the number two team in the state of Kentucky and uh, led by some pretty good guys, including this fellow's brother right here, uh, Jack Reddick. Uh, I tell you, Joan, give us a little update. I know Jack got hurt in the championship game of the uh, All-A Classic out here at Rocket Arena. Uh, what's an update on Jack? A lot of people have been asking me. Uh, he's doing a lot better. Um, he's wearing a horseshoe on his to keep the swelling down. And he's trying to put as much uh, pressure on it. Yeah. He's trying to walk on it, get it a little bit better. Yeah. But he's still on crutches, and he's just trying to take his time with it. Yeah. Let's see if we can get uh, some of those uh, traditional horseshoes and put on about three of their guys when we play them, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a plan. It's, well, that team just plays so fast. It's just yeah. it's unbelievable. Those th- those three guys right there, they've played together for so long, though. It's You can just watch them. And you can see they've been together for a long time. They know sure. where each other's going to be on the floor. And that's what makes it extremely difficult to even scout them is just because they don't always follow a precise set or motion. It's just they, they play as a feel of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, they earn, they've they earned everything that they've sure. got. You know, they definitely have earned that number two, number one. kind of depends on whatever what poll, you're, you're, yeah. poll you're looking at. But um, – it's definitely, I think, definitely also giving guys in this area, especially young kids as well, you know, something to look forward to as to what you can do and how you can be successful. Mm-hmm. And I know that um, 
our guys right here are kind of are really trying to work hard at, at doing the best that we can to be the most competitive team that we can be. And, you know, I was encouraged after the game on Tuesday night mm-hmm. that we played at Rocket Arena mm-hmm. against them. You know, when you look at it, I mean, we put up almost as many points as UHA did, mm-hmm. gave up less points than UHA did, and we were even shorthanded. I Very mean, you don't have your start your 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 starting center. Yep. We didn't have Cam. We don't have Gabe, and we didn't have Travis. Mm-hmm. So I mean, without those four, you add those four back to it. I mean, you never know what, what could happen. Sure, sure. Uh, you know, I, I don't think anybody left Rocket Arena that night uh, talking about the opening game of the uh, All A Classic. No one left the arena that night uh, disappointed in the way Crittenden County played. Uh, mm-hmm. Against I, against a very very good line kind of I actually heard a lot of compliments sure. that were given to our care. to our team about the improvement from the first time we played them to that time that we played them and as a coach that's really encouraging for you just sure. to hear that kind of stuff like yeah even though you're shorthanded your team is continuing to improve and continuing to get better every single day and that's what I tell these boys is that every day is an opportunity to get better every day is an opportunity to learn. You know, from mistakes that either you're making or just try to get, you know, just learn whatever we need to do to help the team get better. Sure. Uh, let's talk a little, Jonah, just to kind of characterize your your feel for coming in. Uh, of course, you came back over last year. Uh, you'd gone to school at Lyon County for a while, and you came back over here last year, I believe, and finished the academic year, but then uh, was able to qualify or play basketball here this year. Talk a little bit about uh, coming coming back and then joining the Rockets and how it's felt for you. Yeah, I just feel like um, I can bond with them much better with our Rockets than with the Lyon County team because I feel like I fit more in to the Rockets because I am from closer with all of the players yeah. on our team. I grew team. up with them around here. Yeah. Plus you live in Creighton County here. Uh, you know, you you come in, you're averaging six points and almost three rebounds a game. Uh, not too bad, Coach, for, for a guy, uh, you know, that's been out for a while. I know. It's kind of, you know, he's battled a, uh, an, an ankle injury that's yeah. been off and on. You know, I think it hit its worst when we were at Christmas again, right before Carlisle, when he rolled it real bad. But off and on, he's had an ankle that's just been kind of hindering him a little mm-hmm. bit. And he's had games where he's had 10, 12, 11 points somewhere in there. Mm-hmm. And he's he's been up to eight, nine, ten rebounds. And of course, you know he's he's been out of the game for you know, a little over a year up until this year started. So he's been finding his groove, finding what he needs to do to help the team be be, be as successful as possible. And you know, one of the things that definitely is makes me excited as the head coach is that I get one more year with him. Yeah, uh, I get another opportunity to work with him this year. Um, and I know he's got the opportunity right here to, as we lose these these four seniors off of this year's team, to be one of those guys that steps up definitely next year. And I know he's uh, kind of doing that already, where he's in a leadership role mm-hmm. and really trying to to lead the team in in the right direction. Because, and I've told the boys this, that a, a team that's player led is much more successful than a team that's coach led. Mm-hmm. And so having guys like Jonah, who has been around the game. Who understands the game, knows the game, and then having you know a lot of the guys that are young underclassmen around him, like Cam and KT and Bryson and Braden, all coming back on next year's team, and then we got these freshmen that are on that are are getting some time, and then this this eighth grade group that's coming up. You know, it's good group, it? it's going to be exciting, and I think what you saw at Rocket Arena on Friday and Saturday, the the size crowd is definitely something that I anticipate happening. Mm-hmm. in the future for our program is that people are going to want to come see these guys play. Of course, you're referencing the Friday and Saturday semifinals and championship of the All-A Classic. Record crowds, according to uh, Brian Qualls, athletic director. Uh, about 1,200 people in the arena on Saturday for that championship championship game. So, uh, Jonah, let me ask you this. And I believe you, you mentioned that he had had 10 or, 11, uh, 10 or 12 points, I think, in, in a couple of games. I believe he had 12 points the first time we played Lyon County, if I'm not mistaken. He did. I think it was your season high. And Jack had 10. Did, did you rib him about that? Uh. I'll say you did. <laughs> no, I didn't even realize that I had have, that many points, you know? really. You don't look at the scorebook when it's over? Mm-mm. No. I just, well, that's probably try, a good trait to have. I don't know. I just try to play as hard as I can mm-hmm. and do the best I can yeah. for my I, team. I, I, if I remember correctly, you had 12 and Jack had 10. 
He did. I definitely was. You, you I was that. excited yeah. about that. Yeah. I was like, yeah, you know, little brother, you know, you know, outscored big brother tonight, and uh, and, and no disrespect to Jack. Jack's, no, uh, no, no. Uh, you know, really probably a Division One basketball player mm-hmm. in, at the next level, and a great player and great kid. But yeah, it's it was exciting, you know, and that that right there kind of exemplifies who Jonah is. Yeah, he doesn't look at a box score. You know, he doesn't you know get on there and say, okay, you know, hey, how many points did I have tonight? You know, how many rebounds did I have? It's he's always thinking, or in, in any kind of text message or phone call conversations that we've had, has always been, hey, what can I do to get better? Mm-hmm. What can I do to help the team? And that's that's what you want out of guys that are really some of your go-to guys, or just what can we do to to get better as a team? Yeah. Yeah, well, I tell you, if it was me and my brother, there would have been some. There have been some <laughs> words over the dinner table, you know. Uh, somebody would have probably had to have fought over the last piece of chicken, you know, <laughs> for sure. So, uh, so Jonah, is there anything, uh, anything else that really stands out about uh, coming over and getting back uh, with your buds over here and playing basketball? I just know we have a lot of potential, mm-hmm. and I think next year is going to be our year. Yeah. Well, uh, certainly have a lot returning next year. We're going to take just a quick break, and we'll be right back, and we're going to talk about uh, really some disheartening news uh, for Rocket Basketball. We'll be back in just a second. All right, now we're back, and we're going to discuss uh, really, uh, again, something that's it's pretty emotional uh, for a lot of Rocket fans, uh, and, and even myself. Uh, uh, you know, Travis Champion went down in the Muhlenberg County game after he had been out for a healing period uh, and a diagnosis that he had a uh, torn ACL, and as we've discovered now, uh, even some damage to the meniscus. So, uh, but he did try to make that comeback, braced it up, uh, coached just a valiant, valiant two games, uh, played a little bit against Fort Campbell, came back the next night at home, huge crowd there to see him, and just everybody's just, you know, you could see it. It, it, it just warmed the hearts of everybody in Rocket Arena that he was out there and he scored 25 points and minute left in a game, as close game, a uh, minute left, and uh, he goes down, and that was it. Yeah, it was it was pretty heartbreaking, and it was on his 18th birthday too, which yeah. which made it a little bit harder. Um, you know, he was really hoping to get back this year, um, and I know some people will probably assume it was because he was chasing the record, and in his mind, that was not even in the forefront of it. Mm-hmm. Like he could care less. He couldn't care less about that record. He couldn't care less about his stats. What he wanted to do was be out there with these guys. Mm-hmm. He wanted to be out there in uniform. Um, and getting the opportunity to see him do that uh, was very was very heartwarming. And I've I've never really heard a gym go from being as loud as it was that night to being as quiet as it was that fast. No. Um, and that just kind of exemplifies, you know, how much people have enjoyed watching him over the last few years. And it also shows the amount of work that he's put in on the floor, but also exemplifies what kind of kid he is off the floor. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a great kid. He's a great leader. Uh, again, kind of a lot like Jonah here. Never really concerned about what his numbers are. It's always what can he do to fix what went wrong. What can he, what could he do to to get better? Um, and that's that was a great trait to have as a as a leader. And and in, re, in reality, he really is still kind of a, a leader in that locker room. He's very encouraging. He's now in a different kind of capacity as a leader he's not out there on the floor competing with them but he's definitely he's keeping morale up he's he's laughing and having a good time with them mm-hmm. um so we definitely uh we, we feel for him sure you know and i can i can empathize with what he's going through my knee my knee injury was my senior year of college so i knew it for it was a little bit different because i knew that for me there was nothing else after that there was no more playing after that season was over so i did everything i could just to get back out on the floor 
even if that meant playing through injury and then through pain. But uh, we know that there's still a next step for Travis. Mm-hmm. There's going to be more opportunities for him to, to continue playing wherever that may be. I right. know uh, with the injury, sometimes things change when it comes to the interest levels of certain programs because, you know, obviously college basketball is in some ways a business. They have to, if they're going to invest right. in a player, they have to make sure that they're going to get a return out of it. And you, you don't really want it to hit, want it to be said that way, but you know it, it is kind of sure. a reality. They just can't go blind in and offer when they you know. But I know that Travis is the kind of kid that's going to hit rehab hard. He's going to do everything he can to be ready in six months uh, after because he's having his surgery on Thursday. But uh, you know it's also been a great example for these guys as to what it means to literally lay everything out on the mm-hmm. line. And he and he knew, according to his his orthopedic surgeon, it was told this thing could tear at any moment. You can try to play, but it could tear completely at any moment. And that's, he said, that's okay. Give me the brace. I want to get out there. And that's what he's seeing. For those guys seeing that is that he was willing to risk further injury just to be out there competing with them. I think really kind of fired him up a little bit because yeah. the next game was the Lion County game and you saw passion, yeah. heart, energy, not only from the guys that were on the floor, but these guys that were on that were sitting out and the guys that were on the bench, you know, they were up, they were cheering, they were loud, they were encouraging each other, and that's exactly what you want going on. Right. Sure. And you know, for those of us uh, in the media uh, who watch things like this, you know, we, we had our eye on this uh, on this record because Travis was no question, without doubt, having a normal season, anything. I mean, he could have had a worse season than he did as a junior, a much worse season, mm-hmm. and still would have uh, eclipsed Tim Hill's record, which was set back in uh, you know 20, 20 years ago. Tim played from 2000 to 2005 uh, and scored uh, 1,822 points. Travis finishes with 1,421 if he's done, we, we feel like he is. I mean, mm-hmm. He's having surgery. Uh, some weird things could happen somewhere down the line. You they never could. know. You never know what <laughs> could happen. You <laughs> never know. But uh, uh, 1421, that puts him at number four all time uh, on the scoring list. Uh, 400 points, 401 points shy of Tim's mark. Uh, but, you know, I talked to Peyton Croft. Uh, everybody knows Peyton Croft. Grew up here, played here. His dad coached here. Peyton's gone on to do very well uh, as a coach himself. Uh, was it Trigg and, and now at Mayfield? Peyton played with Tim Hill. He was he it, Peyton was probably responsible for a lot of Tim's points because he had a bunch of assists. <laughs> he did. He, I, I mean, I played against both of them, and it was very difficult with those two. Yeah, yeah, very, very tough, uh, tough team at that time. But, but Peyton, I talked to him about Travis because he, you know, he was there when Tim was there, and just, uh, just to kind of get a feel for it. I have an article in the paper this week and, and visit with you and and talk to a lot of other people around the community and and really. Just to get a feel for how folks are feeling, and you know, Peyton said a lot of what you just said. Just that you know, he knows he knows Travis well. He knew his dad. Kind of grew up a little younger than him, but knew him when he played basketball. And just talk about what a great kid he was. And records are are not what you go out and play basketball for. Not not the kind of player that he is. You know, on and off the floor, a winner, a leader, uh, just uh, uh, highest integrity as a player and. Just, just that's what makes it so disheartening and so troubling. Uh, but that's, uh, you know, it's part of life, and and you learn life's lessons from it. You become hard, harder and stronger, and mm-hmm. and and you deal with the next problem maybe a little, a little, a little better maybe. So you hope, yeah. So. yeah. Uh, Joan, you speak to that. I know how, how are the players reacting to this. Um, they're obviously very heartbroken about it, and. He was a big scorer, and he, like, really helped our team. Mm-hmm. And I think we'll do okay, but it's not going to be the same. Mm-hmm. Just uh, missing his leadership. Yeah. I mean, he, he's a leader, right? Mm-hmm. That, he is. How do, you, how do you know he's a leader? How can you tell in that locker room that he's a leader? He just <clears throat> pushes all of us to do all of our best because he knows our potential, and he knows that we can do mm-hmm. what we can do. Yeah, yeah, and uh, again, just uh, our our prayers and our thoughts go out to him this week as he has surgery on Thursday, and for his family for healing and and emotional healing as well because it's tough uh, when when something means that much to you as as a young person that, that you devote so much time, it is tough. 
It's tough to get through. And yeah. and I wrote about in the article about the, the last time I remember an injury like this really taking the wind out of the sails of the whole community was when Ronnie Moss, uh, who was a great football player, basketball player back in the late 80s, uh, something similar happened with him, and a lot of people remember that. But uh, you got to move on, Coach, and uh, you know you're uh, you're past the, the right right around the midway point, maybe just past the midway point of the season, kind of getting ready for the home stretch. Play this last uh, three district games, so you'll see everybody one more time, and then uh, before you know it, uh, will be district tournament time. Yeah, I mean that's that's one of the things about basketball is that it's it's not really kind of like like football or anything where they play one time a week and then they only get about 12 games in in the season. I mean, we're playing two, three times a week, and it's difficult, you know, mm-hmm. especially from January and February are really difficult times. you got to make sure that, one, uh, your players are taking care of business in the classroom because it, take, it takes a lot of time doing what we got to do. You're on the road on the bus traveling. You're in practices. You're watching film. Uh, so we got to make sure that, you know, they're taking care of business in the classroom, and I tell them that every day. And then, you know, too, you got to make sure that we're staying healthy. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's, unfortunately for this year, that's kind of been our Achilles heel yeah. is that every time we hit a stride, somebody would get hurt some or something would happen. And, I mean, it's kind of interesting to think about it that we've only played one game completely healthy this year, and that was Marshall County. The very first game. The very of the first season. game of the season was the first game that we played completely healthy and played well that night. Mm-hmm. I mean, against one of the top teams in the first mm-hmm. region. And so – but one of the, the good things about, about it is that we're now having guys that are underclassmen that are getting a whole lot more opportunities and a whole lot more minutes than maybe wouldn't have happened if these injuries hadn't happened. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's just something that you just kind of have to roll with it and you have to think about, okay, well, how, can the, how can we help this improve the program and improve the team? And not only as a coach do you need to think about, okay, what's going on this year? What's happening this year? We also need to think about, you know, how is this going to affect us moving forward? You know, what do we have when that's coming back on this from this roster next year? And that's what's really a lot of our decisions have been come to kind of come down to is like, okay, we're going to go with this guy in this situation because he's younger. It's going to get him some experience, you know. And for kids like um, like Kobe Larue as an eighth grader and Braden uh, uh, Braden Day Brady Dayberry, mm-hmm. you know, both of them hit hit big shots yeah. against, I think it was against Lyon County. Yeah, it was Lyon County. I mean, for Kobe, I mean, then he missed one that was a step-back shot. I mean, it's – Kobe's one that one of those kids in that eighth-grade group that we feel could definitely contribute over the next four years to the success of the program, and he's surrounded by several guys in that eighth-grade group that are pretty good. Um, hopefully, maybe we can add a couple more pieces into that group as the years go by. But whether or not we do, it – I'm really excited about what that group can become. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm excited about the guys that are coming back, led by this one right here. Like, this, his group will be seniors next year. And I know that, obviously, everybody knows that the team right now, Lyon County, loses a bunch in their senior class. I mean, they lose a lot. But that doesn't mean that they're going to basically fall off the face of the earth. Right. They still got Kirk. They still got Breedlove. They still got, the, they got Collins. They got a few of those other guys that are – getting some minutes here and there, uh, but they're not going to be what they are right now. Uh, so I More think earthly. They're going to be more down to earth. <laughs> so the district, I think, is definitely looking at next year, from what I can see, is much more wide open. Livingston's going to be tough because mm-hmm. that entire group is, is back that they're playing. Um, of course, most of them are seniors except for Ring. Trigg loses a lot in Jaden Vaughn, which is a lot mm-hmm. of their offense and defense. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, they've got some young guys as well that are pretty talented ball players. Um, so I think next year's fifth district is going to be really, really fun to be mm-hmm. a part of and really competitive. And assuming we can keep everybody healthy again, which, you know, we're going to be making implementing some changes over the summer to really kind of work on strength, conditioning, and stuff like that to, to make sure these guys are in the tip-top shape that they need to be in yeah. for, for 30 games. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're, we're looking forward to it. Um, I know, obviously, this year we're going to do everything we can to compete for a district championship. Because mm-hmm. you never know what could happen. You could have an incredible night. You know, another team that you're playing has an off night. Because um, I'm sure some people told, what was that, that team out of Maryland when they drew Villano- when they drew Virginia a few years no. ago, well, your season's done. You drew Virginia. They're probably going to win the national championship. And then they end up beating them. Or St. Peter's. 
when they yeah. drew Kentucky. Everybody was like, well, you're playing Kentucky. They may win the national championship, so just enjoy it. No, it's like we're going in thinking every night we're going to win. We're going to win this ball game, and it's going to be our mentality going forward. And I think for sure next year we have an opportunity to be to end the streak of of Caldwell County of, of Crittenden County mm-hmm. not winning the, yeah. the 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 district tournament. And, what, what, and 20, it's 2018, 20, I think, was the yeah. last year that uh, that they won. 2017 or 2018, 20, somewhere yeah. in there. So it's um, it's going to be fun. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, it, it is uh, – the grind begins now. Uh, as you said, uh, January and February, it turns into a grind. And the second half of the season, uh, second half of the district season certainly begins Friday night. Uh, weather cooperating with us. Uh, as of right now, Crittenden County is set to host Livingston County on Friday night at Rocket Arena to start that second half of the district play. And uh, just kind of keep your eyes on uh, on the basketball website. They have Facebook pages uh, to to see whether or not these games are going to be played this week. Uh, Coach, good luck uh, over the next couple of weeks as we kind of get back, uh, kind of get back in the routine again. Uh, get yeah. back into some uh, some good games, uh, uh, district games coming up right away. Uh, again, uh, Tuesday night, Trigg County's off. Friday night, as of right now, still on. Uh, anything else, Jonah? That's it. That's it, buddy. All right. Good (laughs) luck, man. Rest away. Good luck, Coach. I appreciate it. Thank you, Rocket fans. We'll see you next time.